welcome to lecture 36 of the load flow analysis we are going to discuss the gauss seidel method so the first method of load flow analysis is the gauss seidel method then we are going to discuss the newton raphson method so in the gauss seidel method first you denote the initial voltage of the ith bus at the zeroth iteration or the initial guess to be by vi0 where i is equal to 2 to n where n is the number of buses and i is indica indicated of the ith bus where 0 is indicated as the initial guess. The voltage at the first iteration is vi1. So 1 indicates the first iteration and i indicates the ith bus and so on. PV and PQ buses are treated differently. So we have to understand that the generator bus and the load bus will be treated differently. Then, however, both these type of buses, we use the complex power equation for updating the voltages. So here, the formula for power PI minus JQI and injected power that is the formula for calculation we know that it is vi conjugate into current where current can be written as the product of the admittance into voltage this can be further split up into the number of buses so n being the number of buses and yii indicates the self admittance and yij indicates the mutual admittance so the voltage can be obtained as 1 by self admittance into product of the power divided by the voltage conjugate minus this term. So from this equation we can obtain the voltage term. Then in this fashion the voltage of all the buses are updated. So starting from the 0th iteration to the number of iteration we will be going on. So I will be, uh, the buses will be from 1 to n. So there will be n number of buses. So updating the load bus voltage. So we will be taking the load bus and how to update the voltage. So the voltage we have seen in the previous example, in the previous lecture that bus number 1 was a slack bus, bus number 1 was slack bus, bus number 5 was generator bus and bus number 2 to 4 was load bus. So this example we are going to see, please see the data in the previous lecture and here we are going to use the voltage of the second bus at the first iteration. So 1 by y22 to 2 indicates the admittance of the uh, second set of admittance so if you have this one is y by 1 so it will get y22 so y22 p2 injected minus jq2 injected divided by v2 so here we are updating to the first iteration so here we will take the 0th iteration or the initial guess then minus of y21 v1 y23 v3 so here we are dealing with the second bus so third bus, fourth bus and fifth bus we are going to take the initial values. So we are going to take the initial values and V1 being the slack bus it will be fixed. So we are not going to change anything for V1. So putting the values of all this parameter we will be obtaining the values at the end of the first iteration with the magnitude and phase angle. So here P and Q is drawn from the bus. So second bus is basically a load bus. So P and Q is drawn from the bus. Both these quantities appear with a negative sign. Also powers are given in MBA and MBR and converted into per unit values with a chosen base of 100 MBA. So whenever you have been given an actual quantity, it is way good to convert it into per unit values by choosing a base quantity. Now, after taking the second bus, we will move to the third bus. So third bus, first iteration will go and then we will write into the formula. So here the one thing has to be noted that when we are using the second bus, we will use the first iteration instead of zeroth iteration because we have already updated the voltage of the second bus. 
whereas the fourth bus and the fifth bus we have not updated so we are going to use the initial guess alone and the third bus also we are using the zeroth iteration that is the initial guess so we'll get a values value of this so here the main thing is to be noted is that above equation since the update for the bus to voltage is already available so 2 is available so as i said that it will be used at the first iteration and other one will be used for the initial guess now we can obtain the voltage of the fourth bus first iteration so first iteration we have already covered the second iteration second uh, voltage second uh, second bus voltage at the first iteration third bus voltage of the first iteration we have already obtained but fifth bus we have not obtained till now so we will be obtaining for the zeroth iteration and here the bus voltage v1 is fixed so we are not going to change putting the values we will be obtaining the voltage at the end of the first iteration for the fourth bus now after taking the load bus we will move to the generator bus so we'll update the pv bus voltage so even though the real power is specified because in a pv bus you will be specifying the real power so the reactive power is unknown that has to be determined to update the bus voltage because on updating the reactive power then we can update the voltage so first we have to obtain the reactive power for any pv bus so reactive power is basically the imaginary term of vi conjugate multiplied with the current so imaginary of this term then the kth iteration can be written as ki injected at the kth iteration we can write it as minus imaginary of vi k minus 1 so here we have k minus 1 term we will use and everywhere for v2 we will use k and v1 k minus 1 to vn k minus 1 so the reactive power for the fifth bus so we know that the fifth bus is the generator bus so we are going to find the reactive power for the fifth bus so fifth bus the first iteration would be minus of imaginary of fifth bus zero at that is the initial guess and second bus third bus and fourth bus we have already updated the values so we will be using the first iteration values whereas the fifth bus we were using the initial guess here so this is computed to be 0.0899 per unit then once the reactive power is estimated the bus 5 voltage is updated so after that after obtaining the reactive power we are going to update the voltage of the bus so the fifth bus that is the generator bus first iteration we are using this formula to update the voltage so here the second bus we will use the first iteration third bus we were going to use the first iteration and fourth bus we are going to use the zeroth iteration and here we are going to put the volt vi value and the p5 minus j q5 so here we are using the first iteration of the reactive power instead of zero and v5 zero here it will be one so even though the power generation in bus 5 is 48 megawatt there is a local load that is consuming half that amount so if we see the data given in the table we will see that in the bus 5 48 megawatt of power is there as the local power therefore the net power injected by the bus is 24 megawatt and consequently the injected power that is the real power in this case is taken to be 0.24 per unit because 24 megawatt 48 megawatt is the local power and 24 megawatt is the power injection so remaining power is 0.24 per unit the voltage is calculated v51 is this value okay unfortunately however the magnitude of the voltage obtained above is not equal to the magnitude given in the table so we have to force this voltage magnitude to be equal to that value this is accomplished by so there is a correlation factor which can be used as v5 correlation at the first iteration is equal to magnitude of v5 v5 first iteration divided by the magnitude of first iteration so this will fix the voltage magnitude to be 1.02 per unit while the remain while retaining the phase to be this much 
the current voltage is used in the next iteration. So this value of 1.02 was already given in the table which we have not got it. So we have to fix that voltage because this is the voltage already given in the um, table. So since it is a PV bus, the voltage is already specified to us and we can't change the voltage because for a generator bus, the voltage will be fixed. So the phase angle is minus 0.8894. Now convergence of the algorithm. So from table if you see the total number of 4 real and 3 reactive power are known to us and we have to calculate this using the values of the voltage magnitude and their angle obtained after each iteration. So each iteration you have to update the values. The power mismatches are also to be calculated. The process is assumed to have converged when each of the power mismatch for the second bus third bus and the fourth bus and the fifth bus for the real power and the reactive power is below a small pre-specified value. So second bus, third bus and fourth bus is basically the load bus, fifth bus is a generator bus. So if there is a generator bus, we are not using delta Q5, we are not using that and we are obtaining this value. So obtaining the power mismatch at this point the process will terminate when it is below a specified small value. Now this iteration may take a long amount of time, large amount of time. So you have to accelerate the computation in the PQ bus that is the load bus. The obtained voltage has to be multiplied by an acceleration factor lambda. So if we take the value of lambda has to be below 2.0 for the convergence to occur. So if the value of lambda is less than 2.12, then the convergence will rapid. So VI acceleration, if we see for the ith bus at the kth iteration, the formula is 1 minus lambda VI acceleration k minus 1 plus lambda times VI kth iteration. So using this formula, taking lambda common and this value, we have to use the acceleration factor to rapid the process of the load flow analysis. So after doing this iteration, we see that number of iteration for convergence we see on this table and we try to obtain the voltage of the second bus, third bus, fourth bus and fifth bus for different values of lambda. So if we check the value of lambda to be 2, and value of lambda to be 1.4 then we can check that when lambda is 1.4 then it has converged at 14th iteration whereas when the value of lambda is 2 it converged for 860 iteration. This means that the value of lambda has to be less than 2 in order to rapid the process of iteration. So algorithm will start to diverge if larger value of lambda is chosen. So we have to use this gauss signal method to find the voltage of each bus. So first we have to use the load bus first, PQ bus and then we will be using the PV bus. So after using the, after finding the all the voltages for the PQ bus, we can go for PV bus with, with the Q limit violations. We have to see whether it is the Q limit violation is done or not. So this completes the gauss seidel method of load flow analysis. In the next class, we are going to see the Newton-Raphson method. Thank you.